Hello ladies and gents, welcome back to the channel. Um, it's been a while since I've been last on the channel, but uh, today we've got a few things, uh, a few news items, uh, shall we say, um, software additions uh, that I've made since I last made a video uh, that will be implemented in pretty much every other video from now on. Um, uh, today we're flying uh, a bit of a challenging approach. I've only just seen this recently. If I just disconnect and try to reconnect and hopefully, yeah, uh, you can see I've been spamming around a bit before. But uh, this airport here, ENSR, has a incredibly offset uh, localizer, as you can see. So we're going to go over here and have fun with this localizer um, in the gloom. Uh, we're currently uh, we've currently just come out of Tromso. You can see us there, and look at the beautiful night lighting. Look at those lights. That really is incredible. Um, I am really, really loving uh, all my scenery, particularly northern scenery. And you see the little um, boats down there. Very cool. Um, so w the new item. Uh, for discussion this evening, folks, is uh, Chase Plane. Chase Plane, uh, let me just do that. Yep. Chase Plane is uh, a fantastic new camera add on. It works pretty much in alpha exactly the way EasyDock has been working. So, you know, if, if it's working as good as EasyDock and actually better than EasyDock in alpha still, then uh, there are fantastic things coming. Um, I was going to do this video this evening in the Cessna 172, but for some reason the autopilot system wasn't working correctly. Maybe it's because I've been thrashing the 172 uh, through my, um, putting it through its paces in the uh, PPL training course. Uh, so we're just going to give uh, the 172 a bit of a break. I'm jumping in the 182. I was also going to do this in the uh, Texan because I haven't done that much uh, video for, um, video content on the Texan not as much as I've I would have liked uh, there are reasons why I haven't done more videos recently but I am actually making uh, very good uh, progress with the the next PPL series uh, that might be a housemate coming home uh, never mind um, so as you can see my view in the cockpit is uh, I have my middle mouse button and that's clickable and draggable just like it is in Easy Dock, but this isn't Easy Dock. Um, this is Chase Plane. So if I bring up Chase Plane here in the toolbar, uh, here we go. Here's Chase Plane. Um, I have not got anything, any presets set up for this at all. Uh, I've only got, uh, let me see, if I go to camera, no, if I go to preferences, nope, <laughs> evidently not. Oh, this is the way it does. Works. If you want to set up new camera pre uh, new camera views, you could go to the import presets. And since I already have the C the A two A C one seventy two, if I hit all, that should bring all the views that I have for the one seventy two into the one eighty two. But you ask, Mantok, that how how can that be? How can that be? Because um, it's it's. it's you know how how does that work? It's importing, you know, one camera set from one place to another. You know, uh, but it works because the cockpit layout in the 182 is not too far removed from the 172. There's a few things that I'm doing here. I'm just setting up some. That's a thousand ago. I'm just setting up some uh, adjustments to the views. Let's go to the co-pilot and just double. Um, reset that to 1 like so and hit save um, so temps and pressures that's fine the switches that's fine let's go to the outside view now and let's uh, import all of the 172 views um, and that actually is doing pretty well that's the front that's the left and that's the back so really really quickly we've just pulled in um, camera uh, views from another aircraft. Um, so we've not actually had to set anything up, we've just imported all of it. It's fantastic. Um, so if I actually went click that again, you see I could pull in... These are uh, these are only the, the aircraft that I have um, actually configured in the, w in the easy dock, in, uh, 
in Chase Plane. I've got to get used to not saying Easy Dock now. That's going to be annoying. Uh, so I've basically just used the 172. Um, but depending on what aircraft, it's it's really helpful because if you're, say, if you're in the uh, the the Airbus uh, 319 and you've never used the 320 yet, so the first time you ever go to the 320, well, you know the cockpit layout is exactly the same. You just import the 319 cockpit into the 320, and bam, voila, if you've already got those uh, views set up in the 319. So that's uh, that's a really quick introduction to Chase Plane, um, and you can see the transition between these views is all lovely and smooth and, and completely beautiful. Um, and also, of course, you just... Uh, set a key binding on your joystick or whatever um, to change your views whenever you need to back and forth and back and forth just like you would with uh, chase plane and then you have another dedicated button that you can uh, swap camera groups this time to the outside you can see and then you uh, use the same camera change buttons to change in and out but one of the most coolest things that you have with chase plane that you've never had with anything else and I will go to it here. If I go to from the presets, this is where you would normally click on your different things. If I go to camera on the sidebar here, you you have control of all the camera presets. So you can do roll, you can roll the camera, you can tilt it, you can change the focal length, all that crazy stuff. I'm just going to reset it by clicking to back and it will reset the camera. These um, tabs up at the top are what um, I'm I'm interested in right now the world tab the world camera is not yet implemented because this is uh, still alpha so things are still being added and so forth we see the green uh, button is the outside view that is the meant to be the inside cockpit view and this one here is cinematic view check that out so what that's doing is that's actually taking really nice slow panning shots outside the aircraft of the exterior so basically whenever you're in cruise you have this really nice looking set of uh, preset camera pans and camera slides that you just you just click that um, that chase plane yep you see and it just it just changed again uh, you just click that that button there and it will set you into this camera view. Another cool thing is you can set this camera view, let me just make sure I don't go too far, that's fine. Uh, you can set this camera view up so that when you hit cruise, say in a 737, and you're up at 36,000 feet, and you leave uh, the mouse alone, so you're idle at the computer for say 30 minutes, it will automatically switch from your, say your cockpit view, into this view. So it's really cool. You can see every 30 seconds, I think it swaps uh, and 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 sh shoots a new view of the aircraft as it flies in cruise, and it just does really nice, smooth, slow panning shots. It it adds a little zoom in as well, and that kind of thing, uh, and that comes in really nicely for previewing aircraft. So I'm going to go back to my cockpit view, and we're going to start setting up for this approach into into ENSR. Uh, you can see where we are. We've just uh, come outbound from Tromso. We had a little bit of issue, as you can see, with, uh, with the 172. I was flying the 172. I, I, I flew out of Tromso and then realized that the autopilot system wasn't working. So I basically just like flew manually around for a while, trying to figure out how to sort that out. Um, I haven't figured that out yet, but um, I will get that sorted. It's the one thing about uh, flight simming guys, you know, some of you guys who watch my videos think, you know, he only he only updates on the channel like once every, you know, three weeks at most. But sometimes, you know, you realize um, flight sim YouTubing is probably, I would think, one of the hardest, um, one of the hardest videos to make as a as a youtuber in a sense because the the flight sims that we use are so complex the software upgrades the tweaks the bug fixes the you know there's so much going on oh that's a lovely view check that there's so much going on with the flight sim and the the level of add-ons that you have that you are constantly tweaking constantly 
checking and debugging and, and, and fixing things in the flight sim world that that you just you just never would have to, to worry about if you were, say, a Call of Duty like YouTuber. If you're a Call of Duty YouTuber, all you have to do is hit record and get your microphone and your keyboard and your mouse and sit there and talk while you shoot. That is, is literally pretty much all you do. And show gameplay but in a simulator you have to keep on top of all of your add-ons and how they integrate with each other and yeah so for every YouTube video I upload there's always there's always tens of hours of tinkering around with things and and doing my own offline flights um, I I've been doing a fair amount of uh, commercial aviation on on uh, on flight sim, you know, with the upcoming uh, Airbus A330, the upcoming um, PMDG 747 version 3, ah, and of course the Holy Grail, which is the Quality Wing 787. Those three solid commercial jetliner um, add-ons will be coming out quite soon, actually. Though I think all of them are in beta, ready to come out in within the next few months, I would hope. Um, so those, I'm kind of gearing up for those. Of course, A2A is 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 uh, coming out with a Connie almost any day now, I would expect. So uh, stand by for a, a preview video on the Connie. And the second the Connie comes out, I'm going to be doing videos where I'm comparing and contrast contrasting the Connie with the 377. And um, ever since I heard that the, that the Connie was coming out, I've been doing 377 legs across the Atlantic. So I've kind of been getting used to flying the 377 normally again. So as soon as the Connie comes out, like I say, I'm going to do some uh, uh, comparison videos. Also, I'm going to actually continue the series of videos that I was doing way, way back in the dawn of time when I first started my YouTube channel. I um, I begun with a series of videos on the 377. I am going to continue that series um, and uh, I'm going to start a new series uh, on the, the Connie, of course, but uh, the, the, the continuation of the 377 series will be how to properly navigate uh, and also how to properly navigate uh, on VATSIM. Uh, you don't see a lot of Connies or a lot of classic aircraft on VATSIM because I feel like a lot of people are just maybe a little bit afraid of taking such a such an unorthodox, shall we say, such an unorthodox aircraft out on VATSIM where everyone's expected to have an FMC and a, or a CDU, you know, where you understand SIDS and STARS and stuff. I'm going to break that mold. I feel like um, I'm going to give the, the 377 and, and the Connie a bit of love and um, get them out on VATSIM, you know, make a bit of a, 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 a nuisance of myself. So that's that's what's going to happen. So uh, as you can see, we're just coming up. The the airport that we're coming to is ENSR, just off our right hand side. So uh, I'm going to fly towards these mountains and then take a right, just in there. Oh, so this scenery is beautiful. Check that scenery. So this is basically uh, midday. <coughs> this is uh, <laughs> midday, you say, Mantok? You, you silly, you stupid. Um, yeah, this is midday on the top of the world in winter. And we are essentially right on the top of the world. If, let's go and ac actually have a look at VATSIM and then I will show you why I am not flying on VATSIM right now. This is Scandinavia. Check that ATC action right there. Let's just zoom all the way out. We've got a few things going on. Ooh, we've got a few things going on down in Australia. That's cool. A uh, few things over in the States, of course. Lots. It is Saturday night, by the way, guys, so that's uh, a lot of things are happening. Uh, but check that Scandinavian action there. Look at the uh, the amount of aircraft across Scandinavia is, uh, is incredible. And you can see Tromso, which I was I was originally wanting to do Luton to Tromso. Why? It, does EasyJet even fly Luton to Tromso? I don't even know. Um, I was going to do the flight online, but then I actually logged in on the ground at Tromso, and literally, it's a jam. It's so jam-packed on the ground there at the moment. I mean, Tromso is not a large airport by any means. See how many inbound and outbound. See how many inbound aircraft there are there. Uh, so that's why we're not doing that. 
Ooh, little bit of a, a twick, uh, a little bit of a twitch there from our our autopilot. Let's just check that our pitot heat is on. That was a bit of a. F uh, it's minus ten. This we definitely should have had our pitot heat on. Sorry about that. Yeah, we closed our um, our shutters as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here. Let's just check what the uh, localizer is. Uh, 1093. So let's just set that in uh, 10930. Uh, enter. Let's hit that. And the next thing we'll do, and that is that is going to appear on on here. Our course is uh, 186. like so. Uh, so when we get close enough we should be able to uh, get that there. Um, I'm wondering why the ILS the ILS is not showing on the map here. Uh, menu. Uh, map setup. Uh, aviation. Um no, I'm not seeing it airspace traffic weather nope huh uh airways no off charts traffic uh I don't know anyway, I'm not able to see the uh the the localizers and glide slopes for the airports on on the 750. I seem to remember I was able to, but maybe not. Okay, I'm just on uh, simple heading hold right now, um, as you can see. Uh, let's just bring down. Okay, so from this airport we could actually go through this gully and hit the end of the glide which should be down there yeah we could actually go to um, HTK let's actually go direct to HTK um, activate and then let's hit uh let's hit nav yep and it's already on gps so it will make that alteration we're holding 5000 feet which is fine and our localizer should start to manifest itself 1093 let's just double check our yeah 1093 Huh. Okay. We're showing a tiny bit. Oh, I know why. I know why. Because as soon as we, we flip from GPS to nav, it will then be following that. That's fine. So, um, this approach is a pretty crazy one because it comes down this this this, this valley or this gorge between these these high outcrops. And this here this is a big mountain that's a big mountain the runway is right there and the l look at the, the the localizer how offset that localizer is is incredible so at the very last minute we're going to have to take a left hand turn onto the runway and what we're going to do is actually we're going to do a go around and uh, we're going to get down to about 200 feet minimums and then we're going to do a pull a go around and then we're going to take a left hand turn and curve round inside this bay and out again so that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is come down from 5,000. Uh, actually, no, let's just go back to... Let's go back to heading hold. And go back to that. And there you go. You can see the, uh, the localizer has changed there. So as soon as we start to capture the localizer, we'll take a right hand, a sharp right hand turn. Um, 
we're going a bit fast. We're going to descend to, I'm going to say, 3,000. Whoa, and that is the turbulence off that mountain, most likely. The all of this mountain range here. We're gonna we're gonna hit bad air. Definitely we're gonna hit bad air as soon as we start coming close to any of these mountains. It might you know what? I'm gonna pull out the autopilot and I'm gonna have fun by flying this entire thing manually. So yeah, uh, I gave you a little intro to a chase plane there, and uh, as I'm in the descent, we can uh, flick round to our different views that we s that we set up incredibly easily. There is the runway off to our right hand side, and you can see how far off the centre line we already are, but yet we're still not look how much we're bucking, uh, and yet you can see. We've, we're going to have a 17 knot tailwind actually, so it's a good thing that we're doing a go around. This would never actually work in real life as a real approach. We would actually have to come in the, the opposite runway. You see how turbulent this is. This is lovely. This is this is how flying in a small aircraft should be sometimes. It's 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 too common to be flying at 38,000 feet without a peep of turbulence. You need to experience some turbulence once in a while in a flight sim and you need to do it while you're flying manually just you know just so you can appreciate it okay coming down down through 4000 feet now oh and you can now feel see how the shaking is stopping and i can already feel that the controls are a bit smoother um and and chase plane does a fantastic job of uh intuitively uh adding in that turbulence um if i just feel confident enough to take my hand off the joystick back onto chase plane let's go to the uh, turbulence tab let's just leave that up for a minute um, you can see the different oh, yeah you can see the different things in action uh, yeah I'm going to take a right hand turn as my uh, yep bam my localizer is coming in and it's coming in quickly here we go And I've overshot it at this point, but that's okay because I'm on it. Whoop, there we go. Okay, 14 knot tailwind. So there's no way we're actually going to make this as a landing, but we're going to follow it down anyway. We have no glide slope, it's just a bare localizer. But uh, you, you've probably been watching. You see, you've got um, you've got different parameters that are dynamically um, that are dynamically working in the sim, and Chase Plane is tracking those parameters very accurately. You can see the wind component uh, bobbing up and down. You can see the ground component I've put up to over half because. Um, but you can see that there's no green line there because we're not rolling over the ground currently so it's not detecting any ground movement so it's not adding any camera shake in from the ground uh, you can see the wind every time we have turbulence and that wind pops up that will create um, camera camera oh, I'm off, off my localizer uh, I'm trying to do two things at once um, whenever that green line pops up and it pops up far enough to that uh, that that button that I've set. Uh, that'll show you that. Yeah, let's just make sure I'm doing the right thing. <coughs> as soon as the green line hits that that button that you set, uh, it creates shake. So down we come. Oh, I definitely would 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 need to make this. Um, let's have a look at, at. Yeah, this is incredible. I mean, I'm doing the right 
excuse me, I'm doing the right thing, but this... This offset is incredible! I'm definitely going to fly this again. Coming down through 2,000 feet now. And wind is getting a little bit easier to deal with. Still a seven knot tailwind. Now that we get we're getting below these mountains, or well these hills, we're we're the the higher altitude higher wind is cutting off and uh it's it's petering petering out into a a more gentle wind. Oh that localizer. Tell me about it. Oh, look at that localizer. That is incredible. Okay, just make sure our Q&H is correct. That is correct. A thousand feet. So we're getting down there now. Um, we're not 80 knots. So that's okay. Uh, I want to be bang on the localizer as I come down here. So... I really want to test the localizer and see what's happening here. Ah, look at that view though. There's no way you would want to land on that runway with anything bigger than this. I I hope that the Dash 8 Q400s don't fly in here. I have a feeling Vidra, Vidra is just full of madmen. If, if, ugh. oh, and you can see the localizer getting a lot more sensitive because I'm coming close. I'm pretty close now, so, um, coming down through 5,500 feet. Yep, 500 feet. Okay, localizer, you can see, whoa, the localizer's coming off. Um, pulling the power right back now uh, as I'm descending quite rapidly. There's no way that I'm actually going to make this as a landing, but as I come on to final, oh my goodness. Yeah, there's no, oh my goodness, I would need to practice that. Oh, look how long, how short that runway is. Actually, I'm going to see if I can just touch down, show you that camera shake on touchdown. Yep. Okay. Pull up, climb at 80 knots. Do a left hand turn, and out we come. I definitely want to come here in the summer when I can see properly. Okay, coming up to 90 knots now. Climbing very rapidly. The, this aircraft does very well. Okay, 900 feet. And that's 1,000 feet. Checked. Okay. Flattening out at uh, heading 330 and just stabilizing that climb. That was pretty crazy. Um, there's definitely, that's definitely a runway that I uh, respect. Phew. ENSB. So at this point, folks, um, I could definitely um, fly back to Tromso, but uh, in for the interest of time, I think I'll cut this sh uh, video short, and I will get back to video editing as the sooner at the PPL videos come, I think the happier you as a community will be. Um, so I'll just wrap up uh, I quickly by saying, really, really looking forward to um, the A to A Connie. Uh, I'm gonna fly the backside off that thing. Uh, looking forward to comparing it to the. Uh, looking forward to comparing it to uh, the 377. My voice is starting to go now, but it should be okay. Um, and yeah, and Chase Plane as well. Uh, it really, it really is something worth getting if you're serious about flight simming.
And of course, once they add uh, track IR uh, support, which they're going to soon, uh, all should be well. Um, so there you go. That is that is a wild, wild offset localizer approach to a runway in uh, northern Norway, inside the Arctic Circle. Actually, guys, this is where we are, inside the Arctic Circle, northern Norway, in December, uh, at the middle of the day. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching, folks, and I will catch you soon on uh, hopefully a Connie first look video and uh, also another PPL uh, training video coming soon to you. Bye.